As always in the daily Twitch writing challenge, we improvise a, a writing a story, a scene, or a passage in 30 minutes inspired by three randomly generated words, which are the words that are gonna be down there on the left. So you can join in and write whatever you want, write, create, draw, paint, whatever you like. I'm writing because I can't draw. Um, it's about getting in and exploring a story, not worrying about the writing. There will be typos, there will be mistakes. There always are. My typing is not great, um, but it doesn't matter because it's about getting an idea out and exploring an idea and not worrying about the formal side of it. So we've had a couple of excellent haikus in the last two, uh, the last two streams. So that's quite an interesting take on it. So keen to see if people wanna keep doing those or bring whatever you feel to the table. Challenge rules are to have fun, keep it short, and remember that you can always edit it later. So again, don't worry about the formal side of it. Scribbling stuff on a post-it note or a napkin is perfectly acceptable. As always, we got fantastic chilled music from the Stream Beats playlist, generously created by Harris Heller to give us uh, no copyright stress when we're doing these kind of streams. Very much appreciated. So today's words for the writing challenge will be boop, tight, password, and temperature. Now those ones are good because they're really disassociated. There's no obvious association between them. That's great. Tight, yes, password, temperature. Tight password temperature. Now that's going to be tricky, I reckon, for the uh, for the haiku writer out there. Just enjoy the lo-fi and the storytelling.
hey, glad it works. Glad it works. I think it's better having it over there. It was, uh, that was good feedback from Back Focus to have it up here. Or up, up. Hang on, I can do this here. It's here. It's right here. <laughs> Yeah, just the concept of having two cameras was a bit baffling, even for me putting the show together to begin with, because I was like, how do I get this to work? And now I can be in like two places at once. Hello. <laughs> I like this. I was doing this earlier, which kind of makes me laugh. <laughs> But then I'm very easily pleased, so you know. We got some challenging words for your haiku skills today. is going to try a limerick. Now that's interesting. I don't even know what the rules are for a limerick. So it's, uh, limericks have to rhyme, right? So, but it's the order of the lines or something like that. You'll have to, you'll have to preface your contribution by giving us the rules as well for a limerick. <laughs> oh, it might block you if you try and send too much information. <laughs> the bots are going to like time you out <laughs> for trying to contribute. I don't know why I, I have extremely strict bots for some reason. I'll Google it. I'll Google it. And then we'll, uh, after the writing session, I'll...
Okay, I think that is our 30 minutes, 32 minutes in fact, so I'm going to look up the rules for limericks. Limerick is a humorous poem consisting of five lines. The first, second, and fifth lines must have seven to ten syllables while rhyming and having the same verbal rhythm. The third and fourth lines should only have five to seven syllables. They too must rhyme with each other and have the same rhythm. Did anyone catch that? I I seem to have blanked the details even as I was reading it. So okay, first, second, and fifth lines must have seven to ten syllables while rhyming and the same verbal rhythm. Third and fourth lines should only have five to seven syllables. They too must rhyme. Okay, so it's alternate lines, right? First, second, third. This limerick is your life. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, hit us with it. Hit, hit, maybe your limerick will be the archetype on which all of my future limerick writing. <laughs> okay. Let me let me read that out. Okay. So, Simpson has written the limerick that says, "Tight as I as I grasp onto the glass, temperature hitting a new class. What's the combination? Password hibernation. Stuff it. I think I'll just pass." Nice. So that actually weirdly connects to what I was writing <laughs> in Vibe. Tight as I grasp onto the glass, temperature hitting a new class. What's the combination? Password hibernation. Stuff it. I think I'll just pass. Nice, 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 nice. Glass, 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 glass. It's the glass. Tight. So class, class. What are we going for? Northern? Class, tight as I grasp onto the glass. 
temperature hitting a new class. <laughs> Yeah, so it says here, a limerick is a form of verse usually humorous and frequently rude, frequently rude, in five line predominantly ana anapestic meter, because we all know what that means, with a strict rhyme scheme of A-A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. Yeah, I didn't pay attention in English at all in school, so I probably should know all that, but I can imagine that my character in here wrote your limerick while he was stuck in the situation that I put him in. The air duct was narrow, much narrower, th narrower than air ducts looked in the movies. Cameron could feel the metal walls of the duct pressed against his hip and both shoulders as he lay there trying awkwardly to juggle a laptop into a workable position near one of his hands. His hand perched on the keyboard like a crab trying to stay off hot sand. The screen was only six inches from his face and the brightness blinded him for a moment as the screen flicked on. A loading screen flashed up labeled maintenance utilities. While the loading bar crawled towards its goal, Cameron attempted a glance up to look along the duct. Just a few meters ahead was a ventilation fan. The fan's motor strained with a tick, tick, tick rhythm as the system continuously tried to force the fans into action. Cameron's sweat had already soaked his hair and he had already kicked off his shoes in an attempt to cool down. The air in the duct was like breathing soup. The laptop beeped awaiting commands. Cameron navigated to the ventilation management tool and prepped the system for a manual reboot. Fumbling blindly to the back of his belt, he retrieved the radio. It slid out of his sweaty fingertips and clattered noisily to the metal duct floor. He had to contort himself at a strange angle to retrieve the radio, and by the time he'd managed to navigate it to his mouth by way of his armpit, it looked like he was performing advanced yoga in the confines of the ceiling duct. At this moment, he realized just how hot it was getting in the narrow crawl space. His clothes were soaked through. A tiny mesh grate in the wall of the duct let air into a storeroom where the air was at least some degree cooler than the smothering atmosphere around Cameron. He supped at the air through the grate feebly, anything to try and cool down. With the radio pressed to his forehead in exasperation, he squeezed the call button. Prepped, go for manual restart. Moments later, the radio squawked an indecipherable reply. Cameron shrugged and poked the go button on the laptop. A screen flashed up. Password required. Cameron twisted his torso over and wiggled his legs around like he was trying to swim into a better position to see the screen. What the... really? Pressing the radio against the end of his nose, he muttered, Jay. Jay, we need the password. Silence from the radio. Jay, getting a little toasty up here, buddy. Remember how you said there's no password on your laptop? Well, there's a password on your laptop, dick. No response. Cameron poked at the laptop screen with his forehead helplessly. In response, the laptop's fans started to kick up into overdrive. The ambient heat had reached the internal components, and the dust-covered device had started pumping all that heat out onto Cameron's face. The breeze was nice for a moment, cooling the sweat on his brow, and then drying his face until he felt like the crust on a hot loaf of bread. Snatching up the radio again, Jay, you there? I need the password to your fucking laptop. The ventilation fans further down the duct continued to tick out their stubborn rhythm of defiance. Suddenly the radio crackled to life. Cameron jostled it to his lips. Jay, Jay, password buddy. Though the static, through the static, he could just make out Jay's voice preparing to read the password. But as he read out each letter slowly and carefully, all Cameron could hear was a series of doos as crias from the radio's crappy speaker. Say again, Jay, can you speak up a bit, mate? After a pause, Jay began reading the letters again. Dooey, scra, dewer. Cameron dropped the radio and slammed his face against the keyboard in exhaustion. Trigger, burr, ba. Cameron lifted his head up to reply. He noticed his face mashing on the keyboard. Had typed symbols into the password field. The enter key looked up at him tantalizingly. Jay's inquiry warbled through the radio once again. Ba. Cameron shrugged and poked the enter key. The system flickered for a moment. Cameron swore he saw the fan at the end of the duct jiggle a few degrees. He could feel the slightest breeze on the back of his neck. The laptop flickered. Password required. 
Cameron went limp and took the longest sighing breath of his life, holding the radio to his lips once again. One more time, Jay. And that is what I came up with. <laughs> I can just imagine Cameron writing your limerick whilst stuck in the air duct. Like when you said, what's the combination password hibernation? I was like, yep. <laughs> that same sort of vibe. I was like, I, I didn't know whether to end this one the way that I did because part of me wanted, I, I liked Cameron. I wanted to get him out of the air duct. It was like, it was funnier to kind of think of it more like a, you know, like a gag you would get in the office or Parks and Rec or something where it's like, it never actually gets better. Um, so I sort of finished it off that way, but I kind of wanted maybe one where it's like, Either he did actually, his face did accidentally type in the right password, or um, he had to like crawl along to the fans and like manually restart it in desperation. Um, but then it was like, well, either of those seem kind of like it's not him that's solving it, right? And it's not realistic because it doesn't happen like that in real life. You don't get lucky. Um, I remember every time I've ever worked in a job where we tried to use the radio, there comes that moment where you really need a vital piece of information. You need someone to talk and you just cannot hear what they're saying. And I don't know. <laughs> I think I'd leave, I'll leave it as it is. I wouldn't change it. Um, reading it back, it sounded. You smell a short film? Yeah, we can make a short film out of it if you want. I mean, it's one location. It's a guy stuck in an air vent. All we need to do is buy what? 10 feet of pipe, stick a camera at either end. I think there was, it's hard with writing to do like the radio gag, uh, but I think I think it would kind of work, especially in a film, I think you're right, because there's a lot of audio in there. And I do try and write things in a way, so like describing the heat, that's quite interesting because with, with prose, you can explain how what a character's thinking and you can explain feelings and stuff, whereas in a film you have to describe what's happening because the audience can't see the, the characters in her monologue. So I always write kind of visually anyway, but I think it's fun to come up with visual gags and then sort of, if you're writing in, in this style, you can then just sort of enhance it with the occasional um, inner inner monologue or inner thought. But I think it should always be through characters, actions, even if it's written in past tense. Yeah, you want to build it as a set, uh, an air duct set? Yeah, right, because I mean, that's the air duct stuff comes in what, like two feet sections? And then you could, uh, and then you could take it apart. Um, could cut the side off. Put a, put a like a um, like camera entry hole that could come on and off. Hey, I know you need quarantine projects, so that's something to work on. I was thinking like because like the air vents that you see in movies are always so massive, you know, they look like you'd fit a small truck down them. Whereas in reality, they're tiny if you've ever had to go clean one of those things. I mean, they are, some of them are big enough for a person to fit down, but normally they send a, like a machine down to clean them. But I did, I like the radio gag. I liked one of the things I found from the last few days of doing these. I like characters that don't speak or that participate, but don't really say anything. So having Jay say stuff on the end of the radio but he's not actually helping <laughs> i kind of like because i think it makes you root for cameron more i think that's what i found by the time i put in the stuff with jay i then rooted for cameron more because he's alone you know what i mean like if he's got a lifeline you know there's the guy in the van giving him the codes kind of stuff like you get in a lot of movies it's like well that's not as fun as if you're cut off from everything and you're really up against the odds. Yeah, you, you feel for him. Because I think it's like, it's something that, you know, when it doesn't rain, it pours, right? 
if something goes wrong, inevitably three or four more things go wrong on the route to fixing those things. Yeah, like in Die Hard, right? I mean, that was good from the words, the tight password temperature. I was pleased that I was able to get all three like as, as really key structural parts for the story. Because as soon as I saw like tight and temperature, I actually thought of the scene from um, uh, Mission Impossible, the first one. Um, right before he does the famous scene where he like drops into the office on the rope. Or it's like during that scene, right? Because Jean Reno's up in the up in the air vent and it's getting really hot and he's trying to hold on to the rope and his hands are sweaty. And I always really liked that. I thought it'd be funny to have like a really uh, undramatic scenario with the same problems. I think it could have been good to, um... yeah, I'll put that in the short film, the short film potential list. I've actually been talking to some other streamers who were doing some other kinds of writing. And um, we were saying about maybe talking about scripts and stuff at some point. So that could be good. Maybe convert some of these into scripts and then share them with those guys and we sort of have this chain link of, of storytelling and writing. I think the only thing that, from, from doing this, I think this is something that all these kind of stories suffer from is introducing the main character. I would have liked some um, I don't know, some kind of preamble rather than always just like dropping in on them in order for it to really amp up to when he's like way too hot and later on you need a moment at the beginning where he's not hot whereas I think I started almost too too far up that arc of him overheating but it was mainly for time, you know in, uh, in 30 minutes you could maybe do with like one paragraph more right before that Maybe something like if he if you try and establish that he's the kind of person that even though he's crawling through an air vent, he's actually really well dressed or something so that it makes it it's worse for someone like that to then have to kick your shoes off and be soaked through than if you're like someone who doesn't mind that so much or someone who's used to it. Right. Someone who we, we could make him more of a fish out of water, which might make him even more identifiable or at least makes the story more interesting when it starts to go downhill for him you know or because of the nature of the struggle that he faces have him someone who is either someone who has some tension with jay and he's then dependent on jay later on or um have him as someone who's like a bit of a control freak who then i don't know that's not as interesting but have something right at the beginning that just sets up and i think that's one of the good things about write, dump the idea, and you can always go back and add, like put that first paragraph in. Before I put this one out um, online, I might go back and write that little paragraph just to set it up. Uh, and I often find that happens with scenes and scripts and whatever I write, is after I've written it, I then understand the context of everything and I'll go back, especially to the first part, and usually rework how it starts to make sure that the trajectory from the start to the end is as interesting as possible, you know. Yeah, you kind of want to know how he ended up in the air duct, right? Obviously, you find out that the heating is broken, but it's it'd be interesting if the heating is broken and he's not the maintenance guy. Like, why is not the maintenance guy in the air vent? That could be interesting, make it more unusual for him to be there. I wasn't sure about it, but I quite like the idea of the, the laptop fan making his face feel like the crust on, on hot bread. Because I don't know what, how you'd explain that. You know, when you when you, it's like a really hot day, if you go from the shade and you're, it's kind of humid and you're sweaty, and then you go out into the sun and it just gets baked to your face, and you you feel because of the, I guess from the salt in your sweat, it just feels like your skin's really tight, like crusty. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just super sweaty. But describing that feeling was fun. Excellent work on the limerick, and now we know what limericks are. So maybe. Maybe we can have a limerick showdown at some point. Thank you to you guys for coming in. Thank you, Mr. Simpsione, for jumping in chat pretty much the whole time. I'll be back tomorrow, same time, for another writing challenge. If you're around, it'd be great to see you. It'd be great to see you for it. All right. Have a good night, guys, and I'll see you in the next challenge.